Good day, everyone. Today, we will tackle about surface and subsurface runoff phenomena. I'm Hazel Mim Campana, and I will be your presenter for today. So let's get started. So flood prediction. So what is flood prediction? So it can be defined as a process of estimating and predicting the magnitude, the timing, and the duration of flooding based on known characteristics of a river basin, with the aim to prevent damages to human life, to properties, and to the environment. Pag sinabi, na, pag sinabi kasi natin na flood, nakakatakot talaga. Kasi maraming nasisira na bahay, maraming um, mga tanim na um, nasisira din. So, malaki talaga yung impact nito sa atin. So, in order to prevent such damages, so we need to uh, find ways or gather some data para makuwasa natin yung threat. So, so, it requires several types of data. First is the time or is the amount of the rainfall occurring on a real-time basis. So, nagbibase din sila sa uh, amount of rainfall kasi doon naman talaga nagsa-start yung pagtaas ng tubig sa isang uh, river basin, right? So, chinecheck nila every hours and ina-update nila yung mga uh, mga tao na nakatira doon. Then, the next one is the the rate of uh, change in the river stage on a real-time basis which can help indicate the severity and immediacy of the threat. So, chine-check nila yung river, itumaas na ba yung tubig, kasi delikado na pag tumaas na, di ba? So, need na nila lumipas. So, meron naman talaga silang mga signals. Like, if may yellow alert, may red alert, pag red na talaga is delikado na yun. So, yung mga tao na nakatira dun na malapit sa river is need na mag-evacuate. Kasi, uh, possibly na magkaroon ng flooding sa area na yun. So, the third one is the knowledge about the type of storm producing uh, the moisture such as duration, intensity, and aerial extent which can be valuable for uh, determining the possible severity of the flooding. So, Diba sa pag-asa, ini-inform tayo kung gaano kalakas yung bagyo, kung ano yung possib possible impact niya sa atin. So, ganun. So, importante yun para ma-prevent yung mga, ma-prevent yung possible accident na mangyari. And the fourth one is the knowledge about the characteristics of a river. River drainage basin such as soil moisture condition ground temperature, snowpack, and so on that can help to predict predict how extensive a flood might become. So, dito, um, naroon naman talaga ang mga rain, rivers, um, basin na madali, madali lang tumaas yung tubig kahit uh, hindi naman gaano kalakas yung ulan, ba? So, kinecheck talaga nila yung characteristics ng drainage basin. And, such as uh, soil moisture conditions like for example um yung malapit sa yung mga uh, yung, yung mga malapit sa ano malapit sa river i mean yung area na malapit sa river if wala siyang ano gaanong kahoy yung plain lang talaga siya so mabilis mag discharge yung uh, rainfall water Rain mag mabilis mag-discharge yung water kasi direct to surface siya. While if may ano, may kahoy, so inaabsorb ng uh inaabsorb ng ng leaves yung water bago siya mag-direct into surface. So medyo matagal yung pagtaas ng tubig sa ganun. So that's it. So Let's proceed to the hydrograph. So, what is hydrograph? So, a hydrograph is a graph showing discharge 
or stream flow at the concentration point versus time. In the beginning, there is only base flow or the groundwater contribution to the stream, gradually depleting in an exponential form. After the storm commences, the initial losses like uh, interception and the infiltration are met, and then the surface flow begins. The hydrograph is gradually rises and reaches its peak value after a time or TP, or cold lag time or basin lag. Measured from the centroid of the hydrograph of net rain. So, as you can see to the graph, so here is the base flow, which is the normal uh, flow of the river. And this is the start. And this curve is the rising lamp. So when the, the storm discharge starts rise, rising, so it calls or it called rising lamp. And here is the peak flow. So the maximum amount of uh, storm discharge. And then pababa siya. So dito, ang tawag nito is uh, the falling lamp. So, the falling lamp is a, a river runoff, uh, amount of the water that uh, flow in a particular river or in a particular place in a, in a particular time. So, you can see here, this the, um, in the x-axis is the time. It could be hours or it could be days or minutes, it depends. And the y-axis is the discharge and the rainfall so so you can see this is the chart of a hydrograph of a rainfall so the basin lag is the difference between the rainfall and the discharge so so there are formulas here so P net is equals to P minus losses. So, it's also here in days is equals to area raised to 0 0.2 over 1.21 or empirical. And then, so the discharge is always corresponds to the rainfall. So that's it. So this is the overview overview of the uh, hydrograph. So if a second storm occurs now, again the hydrograph starts rising till it reaches the new peak and then falls, and the groundwater recession begins. So as you can um, as you can see to the figure here, so this is the there are three storms: storm one, storm two, and storm three. So still, the x-axis is the time, could be hours or days, minutes, it depends, and the y-axis is the discharge and the rain intensity, rainfall intensity, of course. So uh, this, uh, this discharge corresponds to the storm one, here is the storm two, and this graph is the storm three. So, the broken line here is the recession lines. So here, um, this broken line below is the estimated base flow. So there are types of hydrograph. So the first one is the unit hydrograph. So it's defined as the hydrograph of storm runoff resulting from an isolated rainfall of some unit duration occurring uniformly over the entire area of the catchment procedure a unit volume or 1 cm of your runoff so you can see to the figure here so this is the time i mean this is the time here so this is the correspond curve the the green is the 2 inch inches the 
uh, maroon one is the one inch, and the zero, uh, the blue one is the zero point five. So, there are steps in creating a unit chirograph. So first is select from the records isolated or the single peaked intense storms, which occurring uniformly. Uh, over the catchment have produced flood hydrographs with a pressurable runoff or greater than one cm say 8 to 16 cm um, second is select a flood hydrograph which has resulted from a unit storm chosen it in step one above so you need to select um, a flood hydrograph also it corresponds with the data then the third one is the separate the base flow from the total runoff or by well known base flow separation procedures. The fourth one is from the ordinates of the total runoff hydrograph or at regular time intervals, deduct the corresponds ordinates of the base, base flow to obtain the ordinates of the direct runoff. And um, the fifth one is the Divide the volume of the direct runoff by the drainage basin area to obtain the net precipitation depth over the basin. And the sixth one is the divide each of the ordinates of direct runoff of the net precipitation depth to obtain the ordinates of the unit hydrograph. And the last one is plot the ordinate of the unit hydrograph against time since the beginning of the direct runoff or this will give the unit hydrograph for the basin for the duration of the unit uh, store or producing the flood hydrograph selected in a step one above so here is the derivation of the unit hydrograph formula so p net is equals to p minus losses then p net is equal to summation of QDP over area. QD is equal to DRO. DRO means um, uh, DRO minus DFO is equal to D DRO. So this is the formula now. DRO over P net is equal to UGO. So here is the corresponds um, yeah. So the P is the total rainfall. P net is the net precipitation from the hydrograph or direct runoff as an equivalent depth over the basin. So losses is the due to infiltration, evaporation, and etc. While the A is the area of the drainage basin, and the DRO is the direct runoff ordinate, the PRO is the total runoff ordinate, and T is the time interval between the successive direct runoff ordinate and the BFO which is here is the base flow ordinate. So we are now in elements of unit hydrograph. So first is the base width or time base. Um, it is a period surface runoff or due to a unit storm. And the second one is the unit storm. Um, it is a duration duration of the unit hydrograph uh, regardless of its intensity. So the third one is the unit period. This is um, the time duration of a unit storm. And the fourth one is the lag time. Or this is the difference uh, between the uh, rainfall and the discharge. So the last one is the recession time or TR. It is the, um, it is the duration of the direct surfa surface runoff after the end of net rainfall. So this is the uh, figures. Here, this figure is the derivation of the unit hydrograph. So this one, this, this um, area is the base flow. The, so this curve is the hydro, um, the this church, I mean, this is the rainfall, the high, uh, the uh, peak, peak flow, and so this is the derivation of the formula. 
And here in the second figure, this is um, in the x axis is also uh, time, and the y axis it's also a discharge in the rainfall. So this area is the channel storage, and this is the unit hydrograph. And area under curve is equals to 1 cm of runoff over catch, catchment area A. So this is the lag time. So difference between the unit, uh, the rainfall and the discharge. So the proposition of unit hydrograph. So first is the same runoff duration. So in time base, um, base width or base period is approximately the same. And the second one is the proportional ordinates. So the ordinates of the hydrograph at any given um, time are in, this, are in the same proportion as uh, the rainfall intensities. So the third one is the principle of superposition. So if there is a continuous storm, so they may be divided into unit storms. And four is same distribution percentage. So the time base or base width is divided into equal time intervals. The percentage of a surface runoff that occurs. Here's the graph. This figure is the proportional ordinates and same time base and proportion. So here's Here is the same time base, T, or the base width, and this is the TR minus HR, UG, or 1 cm runoff. So here is the um, river runoff. So in the second figure, we observe that uh, there's a lot of curves. Here is the hydrographs corresponding to the storm. D1, 2, and 3. Here is the first, second, and third. Storm 1, Storm 2, and Storm 3. And this one, this one is the combined hydrograph or obtained by summing the ordinates of the uh, three compos component hydrographs or of 1, 2, and 3. So, limitation of the unit hydrograph. So, in a certain limitations are inherent in the unit hydrograph theory. So, the runoff hydrograph reflects uh, the combined effects of rainfall factors, loss, loss factors, and geographic factors. So the, the design storm continuing for several unit periods may not have the same aerial distribution for each time increment. So, example number one of the unit hydrograph. So, the run of data at a stream gauging station for a flood or a flood are given below. So, the drainage area is 40 km squared and the duration of rainfall is 3 hours derived the three R unit hydrograph for the basin and plot the same plot the the same. So this is the um, problem. So here's the data as you can see. The date, the time, the discharge, the remarks. So uh, the time based on R so two, five, eight, and so on. And this is the discharge in every R. So in the two, so the discharge is 
15 cm cube over second. And uh, 5, so the discharge is 47 cm cube over second. So, as so you can see to the um, value here, diba? Uh, as you can see to the value, uh, as you can see to the value here, so start with 50. So, start with 50 and then nag down siya ng 47 and nag taas na naman siya ng 75 and then tumaas na siya until uh, to 90 and nag down na naman siya. So, the 270 up, uh, up to here is the, I mean, it is the uh, falling length. So, here is the start, 50. So, magbaba siya ng 47. So, yun. So, the 290 is the peak flow. So, ito yung pinakataas. Uh, ito yung peak flow ng discharge. And also the, yeah, it is the peak flow of the discharge. So, here's the solution. So, uh, kinuha yung value na uh, BGO, BRO, BFO. So, base pa din to sa formula. And this is the graph for example one so this is the 290 which is here is the high uh the peak flow from here so yeah that's it so this graph is based on the data here so so in the unit hydrograph from complex storms is involving varying intensities of rain can be obtained by considering the complex storms as successive unit storms of different intensities and the run of hydrograph or due to complex storm as the result of the superposition of the successive storm hydrograph. So here's the formula. Q1 is equal to X U1 <clears throat> and Q2 is equal to X U2 plus Y U1 then Q3 is equal to X U3 plus Y U2 plus Z U1. So this is a derivation of the hydrograph here. So the formula kanina is ito yun with the corresponds of the uh, con uh, constant here. And then this is the rain fall intensity. So this one. So in S curve method, so they use the formula of QE is equal to 2.78 uh, over TR, where QE is the constant outflow which is um, the unit of cm cube over s. And the tr is the duration of the unit graph um, the, with the unit of r or hr. And the a is the area of the basin. The unit is tm squared. So here is the s curve method. So here is the rainfall intensities. So successive unit storms, 1 cm. And so this figure is changing the duration of UG by uh, S-curve technique. And 
this is the formula for constant outflow, which is the uh, QE is equal to 2.78, yeah, here. So here is the discharge um, from 0 to 480. And here is the time. So this is the um, S-curve method. So what is the application of hydrograph? So first is from a unit hydrograph of a known duration to obtain changing the duration of UG by S-curve technique. And from the unit hydrograph, of, uh, so derived to obtain the flood from hydrograph corresponds to a significant storm for design purposes. So this is the application of the hydrograph. And this is the other references. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Have a good day.